In the second part of section 5.3, we're going to look at the average value of a function. And to do that, we're going to watch a quick video that will help us explain the average value of a function. Okay, so we saw the introduction of what the average value is, how it's calculated, and here is the formula for the average value. It's 1 over b minus a, the integral from a to b of f of x dx. So let's take a look at an example. We want to find the average value of y equals sine x between x equals 0 and pi. So again, to find the average value, it's going to be 1 over uh, the integral from uh, 1 over b minus a, the integral from a to b of f of x dx. So in this particular question, uh, b is going to be pi and a is going to be 0. So it's going to be 1 over pi minus 0. The integral from 0 to pi of sine x dx and the fraction out front will become 1 over pi. And remember, the integral of sine is going to be negative cos x going from 0 to pi. Now I just plug in my upper limit. So it's going to be, and I bring the negative out front as well because it's a constant. So it's going to be cos of 
pi minus the cos of 0. So this is negative 1 over pi. The cos of pi on the unit circle would be negative 1 minus the cos of 0 is 1. So this ends up being negative 2. Negative 2 times negative pi, or negative 1 over pi is going to be 2 over pi. So that would be the average value of the function sine x over the interval 0 to pi. Okay, in our next example, we're given the graph of a function f, and we're asked to find the average value from 0 to 4. So, again, to find the average value from 0 to 4, it's going to be 1 over 4 minus 0, the integral from 0 to 4 of f of x dx. Well, the problem with this question is I don't know what my function f of x is. I'm just given a graph of f. So if you remember from 5.2, the integral from 0 to 4 of f of x is just the area under the graph of f of x. So we would have to find the area of all of these regions from 0 to 4, and we'd have to divide it or times it by 1 quarter. So let's work this out. So this works out to be uh, my fraction out front is 1 quarter. Okay, the area of this first uh, triangle is going to be 1 half. The base is 1 and the height is 2. Plus the area of the rectangle is going to be 1 by 2. Plus I have the area of a trapezoid. These two trapezoids are going to be the same size. So I'm going to have a 2 out front because there's two of them. And the area of a trapezoid's formula is 1 half the base, which is 1, times the left height plus the right height. So the left height is 2, the right height is 1, so it's times 2 plus 1. So if we work this all out, I got 1 quarter. This first part is 1 plus 2 plus the 2 and the half become 1, and I'm left with 3. So if I work this out, I end up getting 6 over 4, which reduces to 3 over 2. So the average value for this function would be 3 over 2. Okay, the mean value theorem for integrals says if f is a continuous function, a to b, then at some point in the interval, um, the function times b minus a is going to be equal to the integral from a to b of f of x dx. So basically... The mean value theorem just took our average value formula and took the denominator that was in front of the integral, the b minus a, and they multiplied it up to the other side. So let's take a look at an example of the mean value theorem. Okay, and we'll just click on this video. We just have a commercial to play through here. I apologize for that.
Okay, so there was another example of how the uh, mean value theorem works, very similar to the average value theorem. So in this next example, uh, we're given uh, the f of x is equal to the square root of x minus 1. We want to verify the hypothesis of the mean value theorem for integrals on the interval 1 to 10 and find the value of c indicated in the theorem. So first of all, to find the average value of this function, it's going to equal 1 over 10 minus 1, the integral from 1 to 10 of root x minus 1 dx. So if we work this out, this is going to be 1 over 9. Now, right now, we do not know how to evaluate this integral manually, but if we were to punch this into a calculator, and you can trust me on this, uh, if we punch this integral into a calculator, this area under the curve root x minus 1 from 1 to 10 would be 18. So 1, 9 times 18 mean my, means my average value is equal to 2. So now we want to verify the value of c for where the function equals the average value. So we are going to take our function, which is the square root of x minus 1, and make that equal the average value. And if we square both sides, I get x minus 1 is equal to 4. And solving for x, x is equal to 5. So therefore, the value of c that um, verifies the mean value theorem would be 5. Okay, in the next example, we're given the velocity function for a given object. It's given by 3t squared minus 18t plus 24. And we're asked to find the average velocity over the interval 1 to 3. Now, usually when we're asked to find the average velocity, well, we, when we did the applications of derivatives, we had average velocity was the position at time 2 minus the position at time 1 over time 2 minus time 1. But that's when we're given the position function, and we're not given the position function, we're given the velocity function. So therefore, in order to find the average velocity from the interval from 1 to 3, if we're given the velocity function, we're going to use the average value theorem. So the average velocity is going to be 1 over b minus a, which would be 1 over 3 minus 1, the integral from 1 to 3 of 3t squared minus 18t plus 24 dt. So this is going to equal 1 half. And if I integrate, I'm going to get t cubed minus 9t squared plus 24t going from 1 to 3. So this is going to be 1 half uh, 3 cubed minus 9 times 3 squared plus 24 times 3. So there's my upper limit minus the lower limit, which is going to be 1 cubed minus 9 times 1 squared plus 24 times 1. And if you work out everything here in brackets, we're going to get 27 minus 81 plus 72. Uh, subtract uh, 16. So this ends up being uh, 1 half. And in total, in brackets here, I get a value of 2. It ends up being 1 uh, meter per second is my average value. So here was an application of the mean or average value theorem where we were given the velocity function and asked to find the average velocity. And so we have to use the average value formula. Okay, and the next question, it's a 2013 uh, AP free response question. It says, hot water is dripping through a coffee maker, filling a large cup with coffee. The amount of coffee in the cup at t at different times t is given by a differentiable function c. Selected values of c at t are measured in ounces, and they're given in this table below. Okay, and let's just take a look at part c here of this example. Okay, and it says, use a midpoint sum with three subintervals of equal length to indicate the data, or indicated by the data in the table, to approximate the value of 1 over 6, the integral from 0 to 6, of ct dt. 
and they want us to use correct units to explain the meaning of this in the context of the problem. Okay, so if we're looking at uh, question C here, we are asked to find the integral, or 1 over 6, the integral from 0 to 6 of C, T, D, T. And if you recognize, this does represent the average value from 0 to 6 of the function C, T. Okay, so the question asks us to use a midpoint Riemann sum with three subintervals of equal length. So that means I'm going to divide my... Uh, rectangles into widths of 2, and I'm using the middle to calculate the height. So I'm using the height there, there, and there. So therefore, this integral is going to be 1 over 6. Uh, the width of all my rectangles is 2, and the height at 1 is 5.3. The height at 3 is 11.2, and the height at 5 are 13.8. And um, B2 is the width, and that, of, and that is in uh, minutes. And these heights here are the heights in ounces. And so I end up with, if I multiply all of this out, um, I'm going to get 5.3 times 11, or sorry, plus 11.2 plus 13.8, so that ends up being 30.3, uh, and if I times that by 2, I get 1 over 6, and this is 60.6 .6 ounces times minutes, if I kept my units in place. The thing you have to remember that this 1 over 6 is really uh, 6 minus 0, this down here is also minutes, so when I multiply these together, the minutes are going to cancel, so 60.6 .6 divided by 6 ends up being 10.1 ounces. So uh, that is the average value. Okay, and we're finding the average value of C. So it makes sense that this is in ounces. Okay, so now it says we need to use correct units to explain the meaning in the context of the problem. So this basically means that the average amount of coffee in the cup from t equals 0 to t equals 6 minutes is 10.1 ounces. All right. Um, so that was the only part of that question I want to look at right now. We'll look at some of the other parts when we are closer to reviewing for the AP exam. And here's our last example, and this comes from a multiple choice question. And it says, I'll try to make this a little bit bigger for you. On a closed interval um, from 2 to 4, which of the following could be the graph of the function with the property that the average value from 4 to 2 is equal to 1? Okay, so... The easiest way to set this one up is if I uh, evaluate the stuff in front, I'm going to get one half the integral from 2 to 4 of f of t dt is equal to 1. If I times both sides by 2, I'm going to get the integral from 2 to 4 of f of t dt equals 2, which means this really represents the area under the graph of f from 2 to 4, and it has to equal 2. Well, clearly, right away, we cannot calculate the area under these shapes, so we're going to exclude those. Okay, And if I calculate the area, say, of this trapezoid, it would be 1 half, the base is 2, the left height is 1, and the right height is 3. So this ends up being 4, so that's too big. Okay, if I calculate the area of this region from 2 to 4, it's a 2 by 2 uh, square. This would also be 4, that's too big. So this area here should be equal to 2, and if I find the area of the left triangle, it's going to be 1 half, the base is 1, the height is 2, so that region is 1, and the second triangle is 1, so this one does have an area of 2, so my answer for this question is going to be C. All right, so that is the end of the second part of section 5.3. So there's a few questions from your textbooks to try. 
uh, give those a whirl and see how you do.